Nice to be here with Jeff Houston, Colorado Rockies um, color analyst. Um, first off, welcome to Texas. Uh, what are the what are the feelings on a, on an opening weekend? I know it's no longer opening day for the Rockies, but what are the feelings on an opening weekend when you know everyone's fired up for baseball again? Well, what was neat too, especially back in Denver, is we got over 135,000 people for the three game set against the Dodgers, and then. Um, it, it was just nice to be able to have fans fully interacting back in the, in the stadium, see the players embrace it. Um, and, and I think for the Rockies especially, uh, being able to take two out of three out of the, the Vaughn Dodgers who they haven't been able to do at home uh, for a few years. So that was a really nice opening series for them. Uh, and, and really there, there were a lot of positives that came out of that series for the Rockies. And you know the Rockies have some new players, uh, Chris Bryant, Randall Gritchick. What, what have you made of the new additions, and, and, and how do you think, you know, if, if you can give some analysis in terms of where the Rockies are right now? You know what, I think those two guys, it was really cool to see them come in because I've always admired their play from afar, and you don't really get to know the, the person per se. You get to know the ball player and what they can do, and, and just looking at those guys, watching them in spring training, watching how they interact with the rest of the guys, I just think it it kind of builds that trust factor, which you need in the locker room. And, and for those guys to come in, they immediately have instant credibility, but they just they just kind of molded with the rest of the guys. And um, one, of the, one of the things that's shaking out is, is the closer situation. Uh, we saw Bard get the save uh, out yesterday, I believe, and um, uh, Colum is in the mix. How, how, do you, how do you sort of see that shaking out? It was gonna be com by committee, or are we gonna see Bard maybe take the lead right now? Well, I think, you know, at times it could be different guys, but I think for Bud, he's kind of that guy that likes to have somebody in place there. And I thought it was a really big uh, save for Daniel uh, to come in and save the game against the Dodgers. And probably more than anything is that first time you go out there, you want to be able to get that save for your team. But I think the important thing was for him is – he got a couple left-handers out, and he had struggled at times last year. So I thought that was a big, uh, a big moment for him. Um, and, you know, and then yesterday, Ty Block going four innings, uh, Colorado kid. So it, it was pretty neat. And, and the Bard, the Bard story has been documented. But do, do you think people really, or fans, re really understand the journey he's been on to come back? Probably not, because you know a lot of times once once that happens and you it gets in your brain that you can't do something or it's something that you've loved to do your whole life, and then you say I can't do it anymore, and then kind of shut it down and switch gears to the coaching role for a few years, and then to come back and then to still be able to throw 99 miles an hour, it, it, it's just hard to fathom. I hope fans appreciate it, but I'm not sure they really understand the, the dynamics of it. Sure. And this Texas Rangers team from afar, what have, what have you thought of the offseason move of Seager, Simeon? Obviously, you're very familiar with John Gray. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what did you make of the moves? Do, do, you, do you think maybe the Rangers can possibly squeak into a playoff spot if, they, if, they, if, if, um, if everything goes right? Well, you know with the, the, the added playoff spot. I think that a lot of teams are looking at that going, hey, why not us? And I think, you know, a couple of things. John Gray, I just, I, I think the world of John after watching him pitch, the way he went out didn't did ever make excuses. Coors Field was kind of his thing. Um, so I, I, I root for John Gray. I, I'm a big fan of him. Corey Seager, I've, I've watched him so many times in a Dodger uniform. He's that player on the opposing team you kind of love to hate. Y you hate him because he always does damage against the team you're covering, but I love just the way he plays. I think his swing is so pure, and and I think he really brings an element to, to the Texas Rangers. And Marcus Simeon, to be able to go from shortstop to second base to power numbers to do all of this, I think that you know those two guys in the middle of the field um, are going to be a treat for the Ranger fans for a long time. For sure, I agree with that. And uh, before we let you go here, I do want to get some, some stories from your career. Uh, we're big storytellers here. Uh, do you have a favorite Montreal Expos moment or career moment? Because those were some really good teams developing there in the late 80s, early 90s. And, um, and then as well, do you think we'll see baseball back in Montreal at some point? Well, I'll take the second part. I, I hope so. I really do because I think Montreal is such a cool city. I really enjoyed playing there. We stayed up there one winter um, and, and just kind of embraced the culture of that city. So, yes, I hope so. Um, those teams back then were amazing because you look at the lineage of all the players that came through Montreal and how great they were. And I think the highlight for me is this past 
uh, July when I was back in Cooperstown for Larry Walker's induction. Larry and I came up together. We played together in Low A in Burlington, Iowa together. And then we came up to the minor leagues. And, and, and kind of the funny story about this is my daughter at the time was about six months old. My wife and I wanted to go out. And Larry said, well, I'll watch her. And I was like, sure, why not? My wife was like, a little more hesitant. But at the end, we let Larry watch our daughter so we could just go grab a bite to eat. So my daughter's first babysitter, other than family, was Larry Walker. How about that? And, and, that's, and that's a very unique situation, too, because both you and Larry have serious Montreal Expo and Colorado Rocky ties, which is very interesting. Yeah, and, and that's what's really neat about it, too. You know, to me, Larry's the same guy that I knew at 19. And so to be able to kind of share this journey and watch him from afar and then to be in Cooperstown when he's inducted, um, it brought tears to my eyes because of, I, I know how difficult it is to get to the Hall of Fame, but I, I also know and I care so much about Larry. So it, it was just a, a, it's kind of a surreal moment. For sure. And um, what do you, and obviously you were traded to Texas. Um, what do you remember about your time here in Texas? playing in the scorching heat and, and, and those summers in Texas. <laughs> well, it, I got traded real late in the spring of 1990. And um, so I only had like two days in camp before we were breaking and coming up here. Um, what I remember here, a few things. You had the scorching heat, looking at the old stadium, the thermometer out in right center field off those metal bleachers, the 105. But I, I look at it as this is where I established myself as a big league. This is where I kind of put my roots down. I built a house here. Uh, two of my three kids were born in Arlington. So the ties of Texas run deep in my blood. And uh, last one for you. What do you think of this new stadium? Because uh, you guys haven't been here yet. It's, it's called, what, have, what have you made it? I, some people, I, I personally have said it feels a little bit like uh, um, Arizona mixed with Houston. Um, yeah, that's a good call. Um, that, that, that's but but really, how do you feel about it? Yeah, that's, that's a good one. I hadn't really kind of meshed those two together, but that's what it's a little bit like. Um, I'm, I, I'm glad they have the dome here, and, I, and I, I would prefer to play outside, but there's certain times that it's just not possible. Right. So I just <laughs> I look at this and kind of just think, of, you know, it's Texas. It's big. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Houston, I appreciate your time. You got Thank it. You. Thank you.